Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure for me to discuss with you uh, more or less a case study uh, where I want to focus on open innovation and how we make use of that to, to innovate a cultural heritage mindset, as I call it. Uh, and I try to rush through that in the 20 minutes given. So I will focus mainly on what is open innovation. We'll uh, start actually a little bit getting to how we apply it in our project and we'll, in our projects I will do uh, that mainly on the projects uh, I'm working on with Explore AT as an example, uh, and I will give you some personal experiences and share those with you, and I will map it to theories and strategies uh, as well, mainly uh, concerning uh, open innovation uh, related to CESPRO, open innovation and um, the three O's that are from the European Commission strategies, uh, and as I applied to the humanities, the UNESCO Declaration on Cultural Diversity uh, and the European Science Fund policy briefings. Uh, I come uh, towards that later. And all of that should lead uh, and focus on how we are trying to build uh, innovation networks and ecosystems of collaboration in a certain case study given. So um, actually, uh, young Christoph Mester was already uh, getting into that a little bit, uh, that we are waiting uh, towards the next turn, probably, and uh, the, uh, Peter Spiegel was relating to that kind of turn that he said, well, the next uh, revolution will be a social one, and uh, he sees in the center of this revolution the weak qualities he calls VQ. So that is uh, quite an important, let's say, a framework uh, which I'm relating to and which I'm thinking uh, is quite important. And we are seeing with that kind of connectivity we are embedded into that decentralization and interdependence are getting more and more important and that changes the way of life and it changes the way we are doing our work. The Internet of Things reaches the physical and digital world, permitting the power of Internet to reach humanity. And in reaching the humanity, it is reaching the humanities as well and it is changing the way we are doing our work or it should change the, work, the, day, the way we are doing our work. Um, related to European strategies and the human humanities, I, as I said, I want you to focus on uh, the European Science for Policy Briefing uh, and the UNESCO Declaration. Uh, actually, both of them uh, are focusing more not on, uh, let's say, the humanities as uh, single topics or uh, putting them into boxes, but uh, looking at them uh, a little bit more uh, all together in a, on a cultural focus and, and bringing them again together again. So uh, I just want to put out uh, these points uh, of the briefing uh, that are human-centered approaches uh, and that are related to research infrastructures in the digital humanities. Uh, this is a briefing from 2011, and actually within the last five years, I think we did not reach very much of that what was suggested then, namely getting much more towards multidisciplinarity, getting rewards for that, getting uh, into more trainings and courses and uh, scholarly education for that, uh, thinking much more and working much more to, uh, beyond academic circles, actually mentioned uh, as well, uh, and uh, working much more towards uh, collaboration and contribution to innovation and knowledge society. So actually the humanities that are embedded into that quite a lot are quite far from reaching these goals, which is a pity. Uh, and the other thing is the declaration of the cultural diversity uh, uh, issued by the uh, UNESCO in 2001, which is even longer ago, uh, where they are uh, pointing out the cultural, linguistic and biological diversity as the core issues of uh, and core values of the 21st century and relating them and comparing them uh, with the human rights uh, in, in the same uh, importance. So um, what I'm trying to point out or looking at now is a little bit how can uh, open innovation as or how can open innovation methods help us uh, to enable uh, or get towards this uh, and how will uh, ecosystem thinking or what is ecosystem thinking and how can it be uh, applied to that to uh, reach our goals. Um, if we are, so um, the first of the strategies I'm getting into is this uh, three O's, uh, the uh, open to the world, uh, open uh, innovation uh, and open science, so they are all related to each other and uh, if you are getting into uh, what would be innovation ecosystems or what would the European Union probably think about, uh, sorry, the European Commission, uh, that would be that we are from a knowledge transfer which is quite close and an outside in actually uh, 
innovation process getting more towards an outside in, inside out, uh, and a coupled process, and a wired over that actually into an open innovation to zero process, what they call, uh, where the user is much more in the focus of uh, the whole uh, ecosystem actually, and it is a much more uh, approach where we are working goal-oriented together. Um, so the role of the academia would be on the one hand that we are still the knowledge producers, but that we are much more aware of that we are uh, skilled uh, uh, in need and asked to uh, to develop actually and enable uh, skilled human and social capital. And uh, skilled means skilled for the next generation actually and for the next terms that are coming up and not uh, if you are looking back. So uh, it is quite relevant to design incentives and rewards for working with the users and firms. So the design incentives and rewards within the academic community would be the one thing and I see there is something going on, uh, but just uh, starting as well and the other thing would be to work with users and firms and we are quite far away from doing that. Um, Open Innovation in the Open Inno Innovation Yearbook from 2016 is uh, um, a, a process that can be described, let's say, uh, a little bit more, sorry, from uh, externally focused collaborative innovation. So actually that's coming back a little bit more to how much uh, you are uh, embedding other partners actually from the whole society, policymakers as well as firms, as uh, citizens into your innovation process. Uh, and um, then getting a little bit more into the ecosystem centric cross-organizational innovation approach. And if you're seeing that, it is a messy approach, and I just want you to keep the picture in mind if I'm afterwards mapping it uh, to the work and to the humanities. And what you easily see with that is if you're working, let's say, in the humanities and working with infrastructures and try to embed uh, or other uh, stakeholders or other groups, let's say, just uh, into the process, it's getting messy and it's getting uh, extremely challenging. So the question is, is the uh, open innovation just a key concept? Is it a key concept for the humanities or can it be a key concept or uh, is it just an empty pass password uh, where you probably might get money uh, with? Uh, so the key uh, issues that are uh, related from a business perspective to open innovations are networking, collaboration, corporate entrepreneurship, uh, proactive intellectual property management and research and development, which should be a much higher role. Uh, I try to relate that um, a little bit into, city, uh, into uh, science. How can open innovation methods uh, be applied uh, into science? Uh, relevant terms would be team science, collaborative science, and crowd science to make really much more use and, and of that and really uh, build projects already participatory together. It is a completely different approach and just working together in a collaboration or a team. Uh, it is about ownership of projects, for example. Uh, and uh, to have for sure a strong citizen science approach and do-it-yourself science and meet the needs of uh, do-it-yourself science, uh, working on user innovation, user-centered approaches are getting much more uh, important as well. Uh, to think about scientific entrepreneurship, there we are far away from it within the humanities up to now. Uh, but uh, young Christian must as well told about the travel industries. I see there is, let's say, in the framework of cultural tourism, for example, there is for sure a uh, uh, the, the, an, an easy going way to get towards that or the most easy way to go towards that uh, and um, for sure uh, we should have clear statements uh, and develop strategies and policies for uh, open science approaches. So uh, actually I see open innovation methods could help us to meet the needs in a do-it-yourself uh, um, world and a do-it-yourself science world I would say as well and uh, they have the potential to innovate uh, the humanities. So now, concluding, I want to bring that strategies a little bit more together and uh, bring it let, and and, fo and map it on to the work, uh, what we are doing and how we are doing it. Uh, so, I, so on one hand, this uh, UNESCO cultural, linguistic, and biologic di biological diversity approach uh, concerning open innovation, the culture of openness and sharing, collaboration, and uh, ecosystem thinking and from the European Science Fund infrastructures uh, and this multidisciplinarity and thinking beyond academic circles. So uh, I want to introduce in my research group, a lexicography laboratory at the uh, Austrian Academy of Sciences and uh, show you on an example how we are trying to uh, develop use case uh, ecosystems for the humanities. So the 
actually this lexicography laboratory working group goes back in a long to, long uh, ago in a project that started in 1911 so it's a very traditional lexicography project actually uh, where i got in in the late uh, early 90s as a student late 90s i was hired there uh, and from then on uh, i started to work on the digital um, collections of the of the institution which is um, uh, and try to open up the processes that are uh, in the institution, open up uh, to a different, let's say, or, or on different levels. Mainly, it can be, let's say, we started with the digital publication and dealing with open data. Uh, we were thinking then, let's say, in 2014, uh, much more and working uh, towards reusability of data, uh, getting a little bit more into a cultural approach than, uh, and, and away just from the linguistic ones and developing workflows. Uh, afterwards, working much more on collaboration, or collaborative organizations, uh, developing science gateways and research infrastructures, so opening it up uh, to, uh, for other people much more in making, uh, and connecting it with them. And uh, now we are working on standards, uh, sustainability, and trying to uh, getting really into open science on the one hand, and on the other hand, um, connecting the people to that and really make use of citizen science, not just meaning validating data or adding data, uh, but uh, or as, as well asking them for research questions they would have and, bed, and embedding them into the team. Uh, so that as well had a consequence that we uh, are no more or are having a shift from uh, compiling a dictionary or being a dictionary compiling unit to much more a unit where, where we are exploring methods for the humanities. Uh, and we are working together with several partners all over the world. So what does uh, open mean for us? Uh, we are relating to the open definition uh, that anyone uh, may, can, can freely access, use, modify, and share uh, for any purpose. So that is quite relevant because there are quite a different uh, definitions around. And I want to uh, get into the example how we are working uh, uh, together with different partners, collaborators, uh, or have uh, our cooperations, and I want just to pick out uh, two, two examples, actually, one with the heritage institutions, uh, an example of biodiversity and linguistic diversity portal, where we are working together uh, in a collaboration with the National History Museum, uh, and uh, another where we are working together with a designer to design multidisciplinary collaborations, uh, and all in the framework of Explore AT. So uh, that's the screenshot of the biodiversity and linguistic diversity uh, portal, which is a collaborative knowledge discovery environment and where we try to enable uh, this cultural diversity studies. So we are bringing together expertise actually from uh, people that are more from coming from the bi biology, from taxonomy, from the National History Museums on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, the bringing in um, linguistic expertise and lexicographic expertise, let's say like that. And you have the opportunity to, to explore a data set on the one hand, on the other hand, to make use of uh, time, timely uh, taxonomies and uh, add your data and explore your own data. And what we are offering right now is uh, that you are getting into the linked data framework with your own data, if you have your data modeled in a certain way and connected uh, with our data as well, and you, through an already predefined workflow, you get your data as well into the Europeana, so that it would be a, a link. And on the other hand, we are exploring uh, visualizations. One of them is given here, another we would have here, uh, which are examples actually from our, uh, from our data set from Austria right now. Uh, where we are as well having, let's say, uh, the network approach, the map, and the timeline, so as the, the general uh, actually visualization approaches, and they are mapped uh, on, Aust uh, on a general level so that uh, everybody actually, if the data are structured in the same way, can be used, uh, can use uh, these tools. Um, the architecture behind that is, uh, it, that's just a pilot one as well, where we are, have a person, actually we call it the researcher, but it could be a citizen as well who wants to discover or explore data and who wants uh, to share and work with them. In the green uh, part, you would have uh, the opportunity to work with your data and have a degree of openness that you want to have. Uh, the blue one would be the catalog, that is somehow the lexical link uh, and the terminology. 
Uh, the yellow one would be the visualization, let's say the more uh, visual approach towards the data. We would have a, and offer a persistent layer where we are offering uh, repositories where we are working together with infrastructure uh, developers as well to say, well, if you want to have your own repository and uh, you can have that as well. We are offering a triple store where you can share your data. Many of the humanists would not have that opportunity where the collaboration already is given with a, with a interdisciplinary team. So we are work, working in that uh, more virtual uh, environment and we would have different enrichment layers where we are offering uh, different services. Right now we are offering the common name service which would be the taxonomy service which is a uh, uh, yeah, where you get uh, very well structured data that are curated uh, by the taxonomes. Um, we would have uh, Wikidata, uh, which is this uh, with, the, with the background of the crowd approach, and uh, we would have Europeana, where you can get your data in or where you could get data out as well. So all of them show how they are. And uh, the question now would be, if you are into that architecture, the main thing is, how can you organize your collaboration? So we started to do a design approach about how to organize multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary uh, collaboration within the frame, cost framework of uh, European uh, network of e-lexicography. Uh, we did a survey. We uh, made a participatory prototyping game for the humanities. Uh, and out of that, we developed design probes that are now in a development phase to get towards better results for the humanists as well. So if we are uh, putting that all together, let's say, in an infrastructure like the Area Competence Center uh, to enable this uh, documentation and research process, uh, uh, we could add other services, and we do add other services that are developed from there. Uh, for example, a semantic search engine. Uh, you can add visualizations, and you put that all together in a social framework, which is the European network of cost, uh, which is an example like that. Then you see how you put together different pieces, build yourself, build the whole framework in a modular way, uh, and then make the most out of that. So. Um, I think uh, the common goals and the passion, actually, that is, uh, that is the core of that uh, organization helps us to, to get, a war, got, get forward, forward. We are very much focusing on designing workflows and open them up afterwards. Uh, and uh, we do our work on micro-prototyping and design thinking so uh, that we are getting the feedback of the user and have the user into the uh, uh, designing process already. The process is messy. Uh, it's a change process that requires time, so it's not uh, everybody. It's, it's really uh, depending on the human and how far somebody can go with that, and it creates fear. So you have to be quite careful about that. That is why we are uh, in, uh, establishing network facilitators uh, uh, that are a little bit more domain specific and that are related uh, to the topics much more and that are big communicators actually to, to help us to support um, the development of innovation networks uh, and uh, this network thinking. So um, coming back and cl closing with the declaration of the cultural diversity, uh, declaration of the UNESCO again, the cultural wealth of the world uh, is it in is its diversity and in its dialogue. So we are living that. Uh, we are trying to live it at least. We are going for it. And we are happy to, if you join us. Thank you very much. <laughs>